Hey everybody, it's Marshall Mike here, and this is gonna be my Ant-Man and the Wasp movie review. And I have to say that this is not my favorite Marvel movie as of late. Uh, this movie just falls short due to its predecessors. You know, I feel like some of the recent Marvel movies have been amazing, and this one is very small, right? See what it did there? All right, so we're gonna talk about this, but as always, you guys know how, how it goes, you know, uh, spoiler free half first and spoiler half, and I will tell you when the spoilers come in and when we're gonna be talking about those. But right now, just spoiler free. If you haven't seen the movie, it's okay, because we're not gonna be spoiling anything. First of all, I feel like if you've seen the trailers, you've seen the movie, right? I mean, it's just kind of disappointing about how falsely advertised this is. So if you have not seen any of the trailers yet, but you were thinking, maybe I should watch those before I see the film, don't, right? Don't watch the trailers if you haven't seen them yet, right? Because I feel like they give away every single action sequence. It's kind of, it's kind of bad, right? I mean, it's kind of like, really? You're gonna give away every single action sequence? All of them, all of them were in the, in the trailers. I mean, they didn't really, take out anything to save for the movie, right? They were just all thrown in there, so it's kind of unfortunate. Now, when I said this movie was small, I was not kidding. I mean, the production value in this film is very small. It's very short, uh, and it's very cheap, I feel like. You know, I feel like there were some characters that were stuck in a set the entire film, uh, and that one set, you know, they didn't change it up at all. It was just a really cheap set, um, and it was really kind of sad to see that the production value wasn't that great on this movie. Now, Ant-Man and the Wasp have always been a couple in the comics. They've always been a, a duo, right? Like a duet in terms of fighting comic book characters. Uh, and they're a couple, you know, because they're one of Marvel's best couples. You know, they work together because they're romantically involved. And they're scientists. That's been the whole point of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Here, they don't build on that, right? I mean, that was whole. That was a whole build-up in the first movie between these two characters. Between Paul Rudd and Benjamin Lilly, Scott Lang, and Hope Van Dyne. And they didn't pursue that here, which is kind of weird, right? Not giving away any spoilers as to how they kind of derail it, but just saying that if you're looking forward to that aspect from the comics and from the first movie, they don't give it to you, right? And I'm not going to say how they get away from that. I'm just going to tell you it's just not there. And it's kind of sad. The chemistry was really lacking. Um, it was kind of unfortunate. I really like these two as conflict, you know, uh, equal and a equal couple, right? I mean, they're a huge couple in the comics, and it just didn't pay off, right? Uh, also, I feel like the movie has problems with characters, certain characters, um, that I didn't really like. Uh, because they were kind of just filler characters. I really hate when a movie does that and they have filler characters, but it's true. Um, and it also has a villain problem. The MCU is a huge villain problem. Other than Thanos, the villains just keep getting worse and worse. And I'm sorry, but this is just a bad villain movie. So if you're looking forward to the villain after Infinity War, you're like, oh yes, Marvel's finally finished its villain problem. It really hasn't. And we're going to dive into those stuff. You know, we're going to dive into all this in the spoiler half of the review, but I'm just kind of giving the general gist of what this movie is like. Um, so in short, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a small film with a cheap budget and an unfortunate villain problem in the MCU. And it's not that funny either. I mean, there's not a lot of comedy here. Um, but we'll talk about what was funny in the spoiler half with certain characters, because this is a very character-driven movie. That's the best thing about this is the characters. So all the spoilers are kind of with the character talk. Now we're gonna get into those spoilers right now. So if you haven't seen the movie, please turn away. Evangeline Lilly's Wasp really bothered me. Why? Because she's not as great as she was the first time around. I feel like, Wasp's personality here, like Hope's personality has been drained due to the fact that she's on a timeline to save her mom, which is, you know, it's understandable, but she just didn't pull back at all. Maybe the school sequence, right? She kind of had some fun and laughs there, but other than that, she didn't pull back any in this film. Now, in terms of Paul Rudd, he was like one of the funniest people in this film. I really liked him a lot. I mean, his physical comedy in the opening sequence with his daughter, right? And like the whole maze, that was just great. The magic trick joke, that got me a lot, especially when he barfed up all the cards. Really good stuff. Paul Rudd is really charismatic. I mean, he's a great guy, so I really do appreciate him uh, in this movie because he gives it his all here. I mean, it's really great. Uh, I didn't like the sequence where he tried to channel Michelle Pfeiffer, right, and talk to Hope and Hank within her, right? That was kind of weird. I didn't really like that. It just wasn't funny. It was kind of off to me. Didn't like the performance there. But other than that, Paul Rudd does great. Michelle freaking Pfeiffer is on point in this film. I love her. I love Michelle Pfeiffer. When I saw her, I was like, 
Batman Returns, right? Like, same thing where we left off with Catwoman. She's that good. But I feel like this movie doesn't give her a lot to work with. It's kind of unfortunate because you do such a big casting and then it kind of falls short, right? They didn't explain her quantum realm powers at all. I was like, wait, so she can talk through to people through other people who have been in the quantum realm, right? But she can't escape it. It's kind of just weird, right? Like, I feel like she has so much power and at the same time, it's not explained. Like also how she uh, helped Ghost, right? With her powers, it was weird. I really love Hank Pym in this movie. Now, of course, if you guys don't know in the comics, Hank Pym has always been an aggressive character. He created Ultron. Um, he abused Janet Van Dyne in the comics, right? He's just very edgy and he's very, well, I wouldn't say that edgy. Abuse is bad, you know, it's not supposed to be good, but he's very like edgy in terms of his personality is rugged, right? And they brought that here and it was really strange, but it was also fresh at the same time. I don't want to say that abuse is good, but I mean, it is not good. Um, but the stuff that they did bring from his character was pretty cool in the movie, like his rugged personality. Now, Michael Pena was really good in this movie. He was fantastic, right? He brought the laughs a lot, but I also feel like he was trying too hard in the third act to make it funny, right? And the reason why is because he was trying to ad-lib a lot and trying to improvise, but the script just wouldn't let him, right? Like, he just would not let him go forward with it, and it was kind of unfortunate. But what he did have was actually pretty great. Now, Ghost is just a bad villain. I mean, I don't like the performance at all from the actress. I can't remember, I can't even remember her name. Uh, Hannah Jo Cammon, I think was her name. I don't know. But I just didn't like this performance. I didn't like her explanation. Her backstory was okay. I love how Hank caused her father's accident, you know, and he didn't really even feel bad about it. That's what made me feel great about Hank Pym's personality. But in terms of her villainness, right, wanting to kidnap Cassie Lang, that was great and they pulled back on it i was expecting that to be a foreshadow that she would just do it anyway but they didn't it just made me mad she wasn't a good villain at all her effects were cool i liked the effects that she had but other than that really bad villain right just didn't give a lot to the table overall that's my review of ant-man and the wasp spoiler free and spoiler talk um, it just, it wasn't a great movie, in my opinion, for Marvel. And I feel like because of Black Panther, because of, uh, you know, Civil War, because of Infinity War, they always have to bring it. And for Ragnarok and this movie, I just felt like it felt short. But what do you guys think? Comment down below. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.